we're gonna need this for later welcome to a video about what I got from Japan I'm, I'm sure it's gonna come out somewhat decent as you can see I have this very beautiful long cylinder-esque object here just 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 ready to go I know you're probably wondering what that's for but but we'll find out soon enough so you've already known that I actually picked up a Millennium Puzzle Oh yes, you already know that I picked this up from Japan. So from an ancient, from an ancient card shop, an ancient antiques place, there was the Millennium Puzzle sitting in the back of the shop, um, covered in dust. No one had, I guess, been coming in looking for that because apparently, you know, you know, people not looking for that kind of stuff. Also sitting around there was the Millennium Chest, which a lot of you guys may have got a glimpse at in a different video. Um, it even opens up, of course, it's absolutely amazing. There's nothing in there, and this puzzle I did not have to put together. The puzzle was already pre-assembled, so, and they didn't come together, so I had to get them separate. So there's a Sega store in Japan, um, and at this Sega store, um, it's kind of like a giant arcade. They have pachinko machines there, they have all kinds of stuff. The crazy thing about this Sega store is there's multiple Sega stores, um, and they all celebrate and do different things there. So at this one particular Sega store, it was more of like a trading card game um, Sega store, which was awesome. They had this game there that was, there was an arcade console that was set up, and people were using these cards to battle on the arcade console. And they would play the cards on the console, and it would bring the cards to life on the screen. That was actually fantastic, but here are some of the cards. I was able to get them from Japan. Um, that was actually pretty cool. Let's see if I can get some focus on these cards. Yeah, there you go. Wow, there we go. So these cards are actually pretty nice. Um, I really wish that I could play the game uh, because I couldn't, because, of course, because I can't speak, <laughs> speak or read Japanese. But um, here it is, some, some of the cards. Um, I was really excited to see the game. Like the people that were playing uh, looked like they were extremely into it. The game was super intense. Uh, where basically they were playing the cards and moving them around the table and they were interacting with one another. They all have seen that special attacks and special moves. Um, it seemed kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics or Disgaea almost. But they were using um, these trading card game characters as units. And I'm not really sure what they're from. But that is one of the coolest things that they had at that Sega store. This is the brochure from the actual place. Um, this is the brochure from the Sega place for that game. Um, in this brochure, it just breaks down the gameplay and it shows you what's what was going on in the actual uh, arcade place. So so look at all these characters and figures and I'm, I'm sure that maybe one of you or two of you can read Japanese. So you might be able to read some of this stuff if you just pause it. But like look at this stuff it's it's absolutely incredible it was it was more than what i was actually expecting it's just so so good like you can see like the console here how they just play it right on the screen and then they also have mobile app functionality and all types of stuff it's just it just seemed like an extremely immersive game um that was really something that i was interested in but i really didn't get a chance to play it because i couldn't read any of that stuff so that was a little bit of some free stuff that I got from the Sega store. We have even more in store. So, so at the Sega store, they have these real dank things to keep your keep your nasty mitts clean. Sonic says, "Stay fresh." So apparently, this is a wet nap, <laughs> a Sonic wet nap. <laughs> they love Sonic 06 there in the Sega store. There's like a big statue, um, like a life size cardboard cutout of a anime girl, and Sonic is like jumping on her head. So, that, I don't know what's up with that. Now, uh, I did pick up a lot of interesting things here uh, for them Amiibo fans. I was able to pick up two of these rare Amiibos. So, these are the Monster Hunter Story Amiibos. Um, and these Amiibos are really hard to find. You can't get them anywhere. Um, and since they were destroyed in the packaging being brought here i'm just gonna open it right now because you know, no there we go that's the focus we need look it looks really really good like i really like the design on this i'll probably never get to actually use it for what it what it's intended for but i mean hey 
It is what it is. <laughs> You, you you can't give it you can't use it for the intended use because basically uh monster hunger stories is not out i think in the states um if it is maybe i can use these at some point but as far as i know it isn't oh wow did i just break it already oh well no maybe you can just take the guy off i didn't know you could take the guy off but apparently here is the monster hunter amiibo and here is the guy um, I guess you can just take the guy on and off. That's interesting. Didn't even, didn't know that was a thing. So yeah, here it is with the guy on there. I wonder if that girl can come off. All right, so I just showed you the dank Monster Hunter Amiibos, of course. But these is something else I picked up too. I picked up these, um, models of Dragon Ball Super, uh, figurines. So, so this is a Vegeta and it's like, like an all black, uh, Super Saiyan, uh, gold hair Vegeta and here's like here's the bust of, of that Vegeta here so you got this like all black Super Saiyan Vegeta posing Vegeta of another additional one which is this Goku Super Saiyan blue one which is actually one of the sweeter ones it's actually uh, it's actually really cool now, I guess you could get a Super Saiyan Blue and there was a Gold go Hair Super Saiyan version. But I did pick up the Super Saiyan Blue version of Goku, which is pretty dang legit. Like, I think it's awesome. He's doing this, like, awesome kick. It's it's pretty it's pretty cool, man. I really I really like this. This is a badass Goku statue. We're, we're not at the Sega store anymore. We're at, like, a card shop by the Sega store. Um, but we'll, we'll go back to the Sega store in a minute, but here is just a random, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains. I think this is like a, like a, like a manga. And also there's packs in the back of here. So I hadn't opened this yet. Um, I did plan on opening it on camera. So let's, let's get this thing open. So we're looking at three packs here. Um, uh, I think it's called Circuit Breaker. Yeah. Circuit Break. Yeah, three packs of circuit Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains Circuit Break, along with this Circuit Break manga that I guess is actually, oh, wait, well, it's, it's like not really a manga. It's more like concept arts and cards and combos. It's like all kinds of stuff in here. So something I'll probably look at later on, but man, it's, it looks really good. I guess, you know, I haven't seen this anywhere in the States or anything. So I'm guessing this must be like a Japanese kind of exclusive thing, but let's open up some packs and see what's in here. Because of course, you know, I mean, what was the point? Now opening that, that up if we're not gonna open up the packs. Uh, so Japanese cards. I can't tell what any of these are, but there's no ultras, <laughs> nothing special. No, uh, no ultras, no supers, no seekers, no nothing. Just regular cardos. It's been a long time since I held some physical Yugi's in my hand, so that's actually pretty cool. Alright, so let's look at the next pack. See if we get something valuable. I can sell it on Japanese eBay. <laughs> okay, well, it looks like we got a Link monster here, so at least we did get that, so now we can Link summon. I guess this Link, well, is this the Link monster? Yeah. I guess the two two link monster, so that's slightly exciting. We still still need better cards. Oh, okay. So now we actually do got a link monster. We got a super rare. Um, what is this? Like some sort of uh, I don't know, some lady. <laughs> So, so we have this. I don't. I have no idea. Maybe you guys can let me know what that is in the comment section. But that was our packs from that Japanese opening thing. In the same Sega building, um, there was a floor where they did nothing but Yu-Gi-Oh there. Um, it was right above that card game thing, and there, there was like, um, like a raffle. 
like you could buy like a blind opening and get like some trinkets, some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. But they had some like medallions and some other things that was really cool that was set up for their anniversary, for the 20th year anniversary of Yu-Gi-Oh. However, they were sold out of all that stuff. So what I ended up getting was these blind packs here that I've already opened. I couldn't wait. And um, basically what this is, is two bookmarks and two um, pins to wear like on your chest or wear anywhere at swag. So here's bookmark number one. Again, it's random, so I didn't get to choose, but I don't mind. Uh, you say Fudo. This is actually a pretty badass bookmark. You know, it's nothing on the back, but it's just right in the front is You say Fudo. So it's pretty badass. And then we can take a look at this last one because we did get two. And it came with a small soft drink. <laughs> and uh, here's uh, another one, the Seto Kaiba, Duelist Legend. So that was actually pretty nuts. All right, so I got a Kaiba and a Yusei Fudo. That's not bad. That's two of my favorite characters in Yu-Gi-Oh! of all time. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad at that at all. And then we can open up this next item here, which is another, which is the pen, actually. And this is a Playmaker pen. So, and Playmaker, of course, is the latest uh, hero in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series and Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. And, yeah, I, I like Playmaker a lot, too. So, that, that actually works out. And then here's the last and final one, which is another Yusei Fudo pen, which, again, I don't mind. I would have I preferred Yami. I would have preferred King of Games. I would have preferred that man. But, but that's not what happened. This is what we got. So, we got to live with it. Now, what else do we have? Now, while we were there, I went to a manga shop, and there, and I was able to pick up the first episode of one of my favorite um, anime mangas of all time, one of my favorite Japanese animated stories, Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, I was able to pick up the first manga for the very first episode. I thought that was really cool. I don't think these are particularly rare or anything, but I just got one because I really wanted one. And then I also picked this up. The uh, full set, or at least what I believe to be the full set of Yu-Gi-Oh! R. Now, I'm not sure if you ever heard of Yu-Gi-Oh! R before, but basically this is a series of Yu-Gi-Oh! that happened sometime um, right after Battle City, um, before the Orichalco stuff. So, so this just literally happened right after Merrick was defeated. You can see where this kind of like, the story kind of ends off. So it's, it's really cool um, how these covers are. Like these covers are specially made covers um, because you know, as you can see, they can kind of lift up like this and you have like the regular black and white cover. But these are just made color just uh, for the sake of this creation, I suppose. And um, here's another one here, Yu-Gi-Oh! R. Maybe one day I'll get through these and read these and, and let you guys know what the story is about. But I have never heard of Yu-Gi-Oh! R. ever. And this villain um, here is like a newer villain or, or a new villain for Yugi and Kaiba to face after Battle City. So I have no idea what happens in this series. But uh, through these five books, I guess you find out. So I haven't opened up and read through or even glimpsed through any of the pictures because, you know, I can't read Japanese. Now, at the, now, now that I have shown you my final waifu fan... Here, here it is, the Sega, the Sega waifu. I think it's like the Sega idols. Like these are like people who are like singing pop songs for Sega. And I think it's like these girls too. And like they all love Sonic. It's, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, now I'll show you guys what you've really been waiting for. My prize from the otaku box. Like so apparently in Japan, they have a lot of capsules everywhere. And in these capsules, you can get all kinds of stuff. Like right here, I have a capsule of a keychain Millennium necklace, um, which is kind of random, but you can probably barely see it because it's so tiny. But it's a keychain Millennium necklace in here. And then they have all seven Millennium items you can get from that little box. I didn't sit there trying to get all those. And then I got something from an otaku box. Now, I don't know what this is. Maybe somebody could tell me what this is, but there, there was an otaku like thing to get stuff from, and this is what came out of it. So you, maybe you can tell me what this is. I have no idea what this is, but maybe you guys will let me know. But uh, but yeah, that that was one of the that was one of the prizes to come out of that thing. 
I thought it was pretty funny <laughs> that that it was an otaku box in general. Mm. This isn't gonna work. Okay. Yeah, this this pillow is a little too stroke. But uh, you know what? It's the pillow I got. So you gotta make it work. Get this on. Figure out. About to make this double thick. Let's get this in here. Stuff this pillow. Yeah, get that get stuffed, baby. Ugh. Yeah, get stuffed. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Twice the pillow, twice the thick. <laughs> well, I hope you boys enjoyed my sexy haul from Japan. Let me know in the comment section what was your favorite. And uh, let me know what you guys think of all these cool things. I got more stories from Japan, but this is just one of the first ones I want to bring you guys. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, keep it dead.